the wall would keep going like this. And it would keep going like this. This would be hidden, and this we would see. Remember what we're seeing and what we're not seeing. That's one thing. The pencil crayons are great for helping us see the different planes. And by planes, I mean flat surfaces. So when one, this, this is an underplane, this is a side plane, this is a top plane, that's a facing plane. And to put that on our floor plan, it's on our left wall. And this is our left wall. And this is our right. That's our corner. We counted over to 8. And we went over to 12. And we built out three feet, but we've only got two feet here, so we're going to have to add another foot. And when things are built in, you put a dotted line. So we have our built-in now on our floor plan. So we can have someone standing at the table here. Since we have a six-foot eye level for a man, all we have to do is just make sure that the top of his head is at the six foot line. We can choose where we want him to stand. It will be fine. His feet will fall in the right place. Let's put him about there. If that's the edge of your built-in display, then just a smidge out from that we'll put our figure. And now remember how we do it. He'll be in perspective, so we've got to give ourselves some perspective lines. And we'll draw him right on the thing. We want to give ourselves some measurements. So on a scrap of paper, we'll take the top of his head and the bottom of his feet, fold that in half, and that'll give us center. Remember how important that was before when we drew our lady, finding the center. And now we need three divisions at the top. I find this folding paper to be one of the more accurate ways to do this. You, there's the other method, that of extending these lines vert horizontally and dividing that way. But let's try this way this time. So you get them all folded flat again and you'll get three three divisions. And then remember the bottom, you divide in half for the bottom of the knee. There's the bottom of the knee. We'll have him in a three-quarter view, so he's We'll need to use perspective for him. So we'll just put some things to remind us. For his shoulder, definitely. So y'all remember now the measurements, how they go. So the first one is head and neck, three quarters head, the rest one quarter neck. And this is nothing, this is shoulder, but remember shoulders have a triangle there. And this is nothing but just below is waist. And then hip, hip to bottom of the knee. And bottom of the knee to 
oops, did I get that right? Yeah, that's right. And bottom of the knee, this put a line there. That's, and arms are attached, remember, to the body. They don't hinge on at the side. And then he'd have hair so we can get woo hair on top. There's enough for his head. That's neck. This is shoulder. But remember there's a tr there's a uh, tilt to the shoulder. This is waist, but it's slightly below that point that we find his waist. And this is in perspective. Then this is bottom of the knee, bottom of the knee, and this is down to his foot. And he'd be standing there looking at the table of sweaters. And we'll dress him up on the next overlay. So, and we'll put the sweaters on the table as well. So it's a little tricky on the grid because we've got all these lines racing around him. But this so we only need a hint of our proportions and then we'll So you see the same proportions work for the man as the woman. You just change the shapes a little bit. And keep it very simple, geometric kind of shapes. And if there's a stack of sweaters there, he could just be about to pick one up maybe. And um, don't let the arms get too long. And don't forget, waist, you're looking at uh, an ellipse that goes that way because it's below eye level. Okay, and then when we do his hair, we'll do it that way so that he his face is facing in a little bit. Okay, so that's our figure. When you put promotional banners in your store, they come in particular sizes and the company that you're working with will tell you what they are. Our company, the one we're working with, has both horizontal and vertical ones, which is terrific. So we're going to put the first one. It's two and a half feet high and six feet wide. We're going to put that one over here. So we want to leave a little bit of space down from the top here. We don't want to put it right up against the top. And again, you're using your left vanishing point. The as best you can. I know there's a limit to how big your ruler is. So that means when we go down two and a half, one, two and a half, we have to go more than half because we've left that space at the top. So just go a smidge lower than two and a half when you get down here. And then we're going to stop it here. We don't want it right against that other display, so we go half a foot in here. We need six feet across. Let's see, we've taken off about half here, so we need five and a half more to make six. One, two, three, four, five and a half. 
we'll make six and that's our banner back here our vinyl banner this is temporary it's a promotion that's going on in the store so this is a temporary banner the other one is a vertical banner this one is retractable how they look from the side is that they have this circle this it's a tube and what happens is that they ha it has feet that stick out like this on either end and the vinyl poster goes up like this and there's a rod at the back that attaches to the bottom and this rod has a clip at the top that holds on to the banner so it keeps it very light none of this weighs very much and it will, the banner will be sitting at the back. Now if we were to draw it in perspective, we would be drawing it like this. And instead of that being at the edge, it would be in the center. So that's the only difference. Well, the difference, we'd have two feet, another foot back here. So we have to leave room. And these can't be too long or people will be tripping over them. So that would be short. So that's what we're looking at now when we're putting in this retractable vertical banner and its proportions are it's rather large it's three feet by seven feet seven feet tall this is the space we have left now on this wall we have one two three four five six seven eight feet we don't want to start right where this is just like over here we didn't want to start right against that so let's leave a half a foot here and we have two and a half more feet so there and we're going up to seven so let's drop that down to seven and now remember it's not against the wall it's coming out from the wall but we'll put it against the wall to start with just coming out a t little tiny bit not a lot because remember there's just those little feet that are projecting forward but there's my placement against the wall and just like all our other things we took them measured them on the wall and brought them forward we're going to do the same thing over here now it's going to be a little confusing because we have things in front of it but not to worry it's a good exercise in being able to work in perspective you have all these lines and you have to keep track of the one you're interested in in the moment so now i'm projecting that forward it's not much higher but this should appear a little higher it's a little above the line and this is right on the line and then when i bring that across using my right vanishing point it'll it should go a little bit above the perspective line just a little bit above there we go, just a little bit above. And this now, I project this forward. It doesn't seem like it would make much difference, but remember, we don't want any embarrassing things happening. If you don't make enough room for this here, see, I had to bring the seven feet forward the way I did here. And this space, once I draw this vertical, you'll see this space appears a lot more more distance away from the wall than it does over here but it's really not so we'll bring this down and it's nice this overlapping is quite what we're looking for and the point where this line this remember this first line we drew way back here when we got our width from the wall this line we have to project it forward on the floor. And the easiest place to do that is going to be over here. We're going to see it more right here. So this, I have to project it forward. It is unfortunate that we can't see this better with him standing there. He's in the way. When I bring that forward and bring this line down again, I see where they cross over and it's right there. 
So now I take this back, using my right vanishing point, and that will be the line for my retractable banner. And when I draw that circular container for it, it'll be down there. And this will be the clip now. If I look at what is half of two and a half is one and a quarter, or I can make an X, which is easier to do. I can make an X from corner to corner and just put a mark. When you're making your X's, just to find the center, you don't really need to draw the whole line. You can just draw a portion. I just made it there. I almost didn't have enough line. So, and this will be the center and that's going to be where the the little clip. We don't have to draw anything else other than maybe the little foot sticking out from the bottom here. We only see one. But we'll have to draw that roll in. Unfortunately, the floor line is in the way, so I can't show you that. It's probably a good idea to darken that line up now so we know which one we're talking about and which one is not that important. It was just our measuring line. Remember that it's important to be accurate with these things, even though it may not seem like it. It is important. This is going to... Because your client would want to know that you're planning the banner to take up a little bit of sp floor space back there, and he could have to choose whether that's what he wanted, too. And this is our other banner, which cooperated rather nicely, didn't tax us any too much. It was <coughs> fine over here. Better to darken that up a little bit. And we'll announce our promotion or our event, we'll be announcing it on these banners. Now, we're only looking into a corner of our store. There would be a large banner at the front. We don't see that, though. We're just limited to what we're doing here. Now, the next thing to draw is our chair. Now, on our floor plan, we don't need to put the banners in. We would be putting them in if we had an elevation, but we want to keep it simple this time. So we're just working with our floor plan. We're going to put our chair in. Let's put it on here first so that we know exactly what we're aiming for. It's going to be one foot away from this three feet away from the wall three feet across, three feet deep. Okay, and we're just going to keep it simple. We'll do half a foot for a box for the back. We'll come in about half a foot and establish our boxy arms. and our boxy arm on the other side and be able to position it pretty much against the wall over here under our banner. I'm starting at 9 and I'm going over to 12. And I'm coming out as far as this piece going over to 12. and drawing this. Now, what you can't tell from the floor plan is the height of the seat. And it's at one and a half feet. So one and a half. And we need to bring that forward. And 
the first the next thing to do as soon as you draw a perspective line draw a vertical to meet it because that's going to help you to know that you have to go the other way so you use our we'll use our left vanishing point to go the other way where they cross where the vertical line and the perspective line cross now we've already got a corner over here that we can use to give us where this ends and we're going to leave this quite boxy because depending on the theme that you choose you're going to want a modern chair or you're going to want a beat up old leather chair or that it's going to set the tone for your theme it's going to help to it's, it's not alone in doing it but it's going to help to now the back we've chosen about half a foot so there's half a foot and it comes up three feet so we used up one and a half and another one and then there's three feet okay so and here's our half foot for our back so we have thickness we're going to need our vanishing point to know where to turn around and go the other way to make the front so this was the side we need that to get the front and it's okay to go too long if you don't know where something stops better to make it too long because you see when I put this next vertical up and remember this vertical goes right against the wall it doesn't go to the front part it goes against the wall so my set square slipped a little bit so this is too high at the back here I've got to make that corner match up now I have to find see this is important I have a thickness to the back so I've got to bring that thickness over to the other side and remember as soon as you do a perspective line do a vertical so where they cross that gives me this and now I just join those up so it's just a series of boxes but if again if I if you don't have a vertical up when you need it it's going to make things difficult for you so there now is that part now the arms we chose to have them like this so we have kind of a tea cushion that's what these are called and we know that it's going to be half a foot in so we'll just go up half a foot there and that's how far we want it to go so I've got a vertical now I need a perspective line and I'm going to go across here and that will be where that arm begins now the arm I'm going to do it two and a half this may alter when you choose your chair and you know exactly what you want it to look like but for now some some of these accent chairs don't have a back they have a, an arm that's even with the back so depending on what you choose you'll have either one of those so now my arm I just have to choose a box for the width this you can do by eye that's not so crucial because it's going to change anyway and over here where this perspective line crosses this perspective line that's where I put the line for this arm and you can see a box emerging there are lots of boxes I know but you can see the box for each arm emerging see this I stop it when it hits the back of the chair that's crucial because I have to leave that 
I can't go into the back of the chair and build anything because it's it's solid. So my arms sit in front of it. There, so now I have a box for my arm on this side. I have to choose now for a uh, thickness for this arm. And I'll choose something more slim if I can manage it because it's further away. So remember, everything that's further away appears smaller. Okay, so I don't think I did a very good job of that. It should be thinner because it's further away. The top just seemed so thin. But you should make it thinner because it is further away. Okay, now this one we have to describe that going back so that we can see a complete box here. And where it hits the back, you go up and join it here. I'll go in and darken this so that it makes a little more sense. So here we had the three for the back. We put the back in at half a feet, which we got from the bottom. We use this vanishing point to get the thickness on the top to project it forward from the wall. We have the thickness at the top. Because it's below eye level, often when you're choosing, and we use the left vanishing point to do that, we had, there's our back. Often you'll be looking for a reference photo for your chair and you'll find something that's photographed at eye level and unfortunately that causes some problems because you don't see the top of the arm or the top of the back you but you do have to draw that in the orientation that we've chosen here. Remember that the person that's drawing it is standing outside the room and looking in at the, and their eyes are on this line and they're looking right into that corner and this is what they would see and they've told us by doing that they've told us that that is the best way to view what it is they have to show us. So in our drawing, we have to make that true, that this is the best. So we're trying to put everything in here that we can to make that look that way. And we've got our banners now that are going to help to make it look more festive, if that's the right word. And this is just a simple box and our chairs are going to look much more interesting, but for now it'll do us. So we know that it fits. It's going to fit. And leave all your perspective lines in. I know it gets a little confusing, but otherwise... So this is the right line here. So I made a mistake on here. Don't make that same mistake. It's hard for me to reach this, as you know, so I couldn't really get in there. But I'm fixing it up now. So, see, this is the part that's hidden, but we need it. Because it shows that this now is the front. If we were to take the same colors that we used over here, just to describe what planes are what, this is a top plane. And this is a top plane. And 
we used blue for this, so this is a side plane, this side. Don't do this too darkly because we have more things coming, so we don't want to make it so that we can't go over this. And we've got the things that are facing this way are these. And this would be purple down here too. Remember, I made that mistake. And if you make a mistake too, you can use your whiteout. Be neat about it and just use your whiteout to correct it. It's more important that it be correct than that you have to use the whiteout. And this is just our template, so. So that helps to describe it a little better. And if you can do it, you can put a little darker at the top. Remember, because there's reflected light bouncing up in here. So it's always a little bit darker at the top and then later at the bottom. So you don't want to spend too much time on shading it, really, but... but all of this shading with the pencil crayon is practice for marker rendering. Put a little table beside it as well. We don't have a lot of room over here, but we'll put some. Now we could always put more shelving, but I think we need a little side table here. We'll make it small. We'll make it just maybe a third of, the, third of a foot, and we'll make it one and a half. And by one and a half, maybe that should be good enough. So I'll just take a smidge off here. Yeah, one and a half by one and a half. We'll make a little square. I don't know if it will look square over here. Just left a little space here. We can eyeball this one. A little space here. And one and a half. This is not going to look like that, that square though because we're, it's, we're out of the cone of vision. It sounds like a Star Trek term, but it's not. Okay, and we'll make it level with the seat of the chair, which was one and a half as well, one and a half. And we could put a plant on it or maybe some, even some more merchandise. What I've noticed as a trend, which is quite interesting, is that they take shoes and they'll put a pair of shoes on the floor in front of a display or a mannequin or something. And it's quite surprising. So better to project it first. We'll project it and then bring it out from the wall. Not that we can see it now. And then immediately after a perspective, you need a vertical. So right from that corner, we're going to go up. And it's looking very narrow, but it's what we have. It's this, it's this little box, but it's looking very narrow. We could always cheat a little bit and pull it out more, but we'll leave it like this for now. And depending on what you choose for it, you can make it different also. This large sharpie is great. I can see my lines much better here. My grid is a little dark.
do the same color. So top plane. And this is helpful when it's time to do our shading. Trying to keep consistent on what plane is facing where. This actually should be a purple plane. Is that the back? And this is blue. And it's sticking out from the wall. It's not in the wall like this one. This is a top plane, and this is an underside. And there would probably be a pot light in here as well, a spotlight or a pot light. And we'll just make an X from corner to corner. That would be the where the pot light would be, right there. We can have some more shelving here. We can go up quite high with that. We could have some shelving here as well. We could display things. 